Sorry about this impromptu live. I didn't give proper notice, but that's all right. You can watch this on the replay. Now, <clears throat> what I am here to discuss tonight is a an accumulation of disturbing videos that I've seen from three highly regarded so-called YouTubers. And what these guys have been doing is if they've been uh, talking a whole lot of craziness. And what's going on, people? Sorry about the late notice. I was trying to do this earlier, but, you know, football's coming on tonight, too. <laughs> and uh, I came in a little later than I wanted to. But um, these agents, these coon agents... They've been saying some things that have been pretty disturbing. And in the past, as you know, I've always discussed the fact that these people are coons and agents because the white man, YouTube, allows them to stay on and collect money while they do what? Tell people to go out and kill people. I mean, today, I mean, this is what these people are saying now. And telling people to go out and kill. And this is Michi X. This lady is funny. She says, uh, this lady is half Polish, as you know. Has a Polish name, Polish father. I'm sure she's been taught the Polish culture and the Polish language. And she grew up eating Polish food. Yeah, what's going on? People eat that. So, this Michi X. Why is she going around telling black people that we need to kill white people? And she's been doing this a lot. You know? Find it pretty perplexing. And she also said something to the effect that uh, since she's uh, half white, she could still talk about it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. She went in, she went in. Why is she still on? That's the question. Why do they still allow her? I'm demonetized, but she's monetized. And how's my what I'm saying more dangerous than what she's saying? She's going around telling people to kill. I mean, come on. And you can't believe for one minute. Yeah, she keeps calling people motherfuckers, niggers, and all that kind of stuff. What did she say? Because I wrote this down. She said her last words in that video was, come see me. At the black agenda when you niggas are ready to really get ready to really get free. Which was funny. <laughs> yeah, Polchak, I think is her name. I keep writing it down, then I keep misplacing the uh, thing. Michi Michelle Polchak. But don't you find it funny how um this lady, this hoe, because that's what she's doing, she's being pimped around like a hoe. To say what she's saying. And she's under contract. Like a hoe. Uh, don't you find it funny. How she keeps. Uh, tying that black agenda tour. Into things. I think that's pretty strange. So if we want to go get free. We got to go pay her. To get a ticket. For some so called black agenda tour. And this lady's not even black. How are you going to be black. And you're goddamn. <laughs> Polish. I mean, I mean, maybe there's a Polish, com a black community in Poland somewhere. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but how are we going to be listening to a Polish lady talk, tell black people what we need to do and tell black people to go out and kill? What's going on, Admiral? Yeah. <laughs> this lady said kill. And I'm emphasizing the word kill because that's what she said do. Uh, and also, she slipped up as well, because she said, this is how you can tell she must be lying, because she said, last night she said she had a degree in criminal justice, and she was trying to half-ass explain laws or something like that. Well, if she had a degree in criminal justice, God damn it, then you know you can't go around <laughs> making terroristic threats and, and threatening, uh, uh, trying to encourage people to uh, commit crimes, to kill <laughs> so if you have a degree in criminal justice, why are you doing that? Come on. But before, she used to say she had a degree in psychology. 
Remember when she went on Tommy Sotomayor show uh, to address that Tariq Nasheed stuff? She said she had a degree in psychology. And you remember when I commented <clears throat> because Tommy Sotomayor really made her look stupid in a smooth way. And remember when I commented, I said, damn, Tommy Sotomayor, he sounded like he knew more about the uh, goddamn degree. What's up, Ken? He sounded like she knew more about the degree than uh, she did. <laughs> Because Tommy used to say he had a degree in psychology, but then he kind of stepped away from it. But she's the one who said it. Now she has a degree in criminal justice. See, I caught her in a lie. I had to write that down just to make sure that I was not hallucinating. So she got caught in a lie. I called her out on that on her uh, live. And uh, <laughs> she didn't say anything. She learned to ignore pertinent questions now. Ask for her. Hey, where get baby daddy go? Proof abracadabra with despair. She got, I think she got like three different baby daddies, you know? It's a damn shame. But this lady, young Pharaoh, and Tariq Nasheed, they're going overboard now. I'm about to outline what these people are saying and doing. Michi X is the most dangerous of them, even though she's a whore. Uh, under contract. And if she's listening now, you can feel free to get on when you want to or raise your hand and tell me you want to get on. And we could do this because I really like to speak with you without some other host uh, at the control. That way we can get it all the way in. You know, when uh, I actually, it, e -Deck, I think Tommy did release the documentary, but he wants people to pay. It looks kind of crude. But he did release it. Took him 59 years and he did it in the worst way. It seems like he was trying to emulate Tariq Nasheed. And Tariq Nasheed, I think he does his style. And he seems to gather some theaters and does a one-day release. Gets all the money. <laughs> because if he actually did an official release, number one, the movie would flop because documentaries don't really do that much. And number two, people would actually be able to see numbers that his movie flopped. Like the 1804 that he doesn't talk about anymore. He dismisses that. <laughs> people ask him about 1804. He, you know, he, you know it's how he doesn't even promote it. He doesn't even say, go get me some, uh, go get the 1804. <laughs> but anyway, let me start off with Michi X. She says that uh, Zimmerman and Latinos are white. Matter of fact, before I even go into that, have you noticed that all these people out here trying to promote this Queen and Slim movie? They can <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I was on that uh, Sanchez, and I told about, about Mulatto people because his kids are Mulatto early. He was saying that if he die, he hope his kids go to white people. He's a Coon agent too. I dismissed that guy. He's a he's a Freemason Coon agent. Sanchez, he does the same tactics that Sarnetta does, but Queen and Slim, you notice how everybody keeps trying to promote that movie, and I gotta ask, why are you trying to promote that movie? When they do a review on it, they're really uh, promoting the movie, and you got imposter, imposter white pe uh, Negroes playing black people. <laughs> how come these Africans can't play Africans? That. What's his name? Dunsu, Jansu, whatever his name is. He plays Africans. So uh, I, I guess maybe his looks are pretty extreme, but, you know, he plays Africans. These others, they keep trying to pass him off as us. And they don't look a damn thing like us. You should feel insulted. And these coon agents, they second this shit. Always got to do a fucking movie review. Nobody asked them to do a goddamn movie review. Well, maybe their masters did. That's why you don't see me doing a goddamn movie review. Some movies you could look at right away and say, God damn it, they're not worth your time. I'll see it when it gets on the circuit, just like I'm downloading The Mandalorian from the spots, you know? Hell am I paying for Disney Plus for when I can get it for free? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make any sense. You know? So, uh, you, you know, I don't give a damn about no Queen and Slim. Stupid ass name any damn way. You already know what it's all about. How come they don't make these movies with these goddamn Africans and have them represent themselves? That's what I don't get. Well, I told you why, but 
And then you got the Tariq Nashis. They all try. No, they didn't put that movie down. They tried to put the Harriet movie down outright. And I guess because it was Harriet Tugman, and these are uh, fictional characters, supposedly. So they still left room open for you to say, oh, let me curiously check it out. You know, come on. Yeah, I watched Mandalorian for free in the Watchmen. Yeah, damn. What the hell am I paying for a goddamn streaming service? When you got your, you got a free streaming service out here. You know, what the hell? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. And I don't like Disney anyway. I don't like what they did with Star Wars. Now that, that new Star Wars they got coming out, that's going to flop. And they keep trying to, yeah, like the Billy D. Williams. And then they're trying to say Finn's character is supposed to be gay with uh, Poe. Or at least they're flirting with it. And they put Billy D. Williams in the movie just because, okay, he was the only one that didn't get the cut before. And they killed, uh, <laughs> Leia died, Han Solo died. So they're like, fuck it, let's put this in, let's try to reel people in. But this Michi X, like Tariq Nashi, she and, and all agents, by the way, I told you this before. Any agent who says that George Zimmerman and Latinos are white. Those are coon agents. I mean, she said that they should be killed. Latinos. You take, uh, for every one, take three. And she didn't look serious when she was saying this. This is how I could tell she was being controlled and pent. You know, and what are they going to do? What's she going to do if somebody decides to come after her? All she could say is, I'm from Detroit. You know how I get down. Well, Detroit ain't with you, Michi X. You're going to be by yourself. All five foot two, 300 pounds of yourself. All by yourself. Come on. So stop it. This lady keeps trying to frizz her hair up. You know, that fire stick... <laughs> I never, I've been trying to do the research on it. What's unclear is how do you, do you have to pay for it? Is that how you get the channels? If not, you know, I just get it the traditional way. And you can get it in 720p, 1080, or even 4K. So, <laughs> only difference is you need a lot of hard drive space every now and then. But I watch them, then delete them though. Or buy them if they're good. But she, you know, anybody that keeps saying George Zimmerman and uh, Latinos are white. I always said this, man. That was, first of all, I still stand by what's going on, Dilla. I still stand by that the Trayvon Martin situation was 100% phony. Because Zimmerman, uh, there's going to be a climax to this story, this Hollywood script. Uh, because now Zimmerman is back in the news when we forget about him, just like uh, what Colin Kaepernick. When you forget about him, they keep him in the news, you know. So they, from day one, they've been trying to call this man white, and they've been trying to suggest that Trayvon Martin said that there was a creepy ass cracker following him. <laughs> Again, I said this so many times. If you look at George Zimmerman, anybody would say, well, you, the last thing you're going to think is that George Zimmerman was a quote-unquote cracker. I'm going to think the man was there to cut the lawn or the man was there for construction. That's, that's what the hell I'm thinking George Zimmerman is there for. Nothing else. <laughs> I mean, come on, creepy cracker. And that Gentile, she was a Haitian. That uh, Crump guy has a book. Somebody kept saying, well, people should, uh, Zimmerman should sue uh, Crump. But, he, you know, it's all BS. That's how they get paid. That's their reward money for this theater. And it's sad, though, the longer this goes on, the more that they're not going to let you know. Yeah, Mongol style native. And people say his last name is Zimmerman. Well, God damn it. Shaquille O'Neal, his last name is O'Neal. Is he Irish? <laughs> I mean, damn. <laughs> I mean, we got to stop this craziness. I mean, I think it's another social experiment.
But see, the problem is the credibility of the media, the legal system, uh, the the court. They're all working together under that what people call the Illuminati situation. This is how they all work together. And now they can't be trusted, so they'll just, after a while, have it be fade away and act like it was real. But it's not real. But she said that the man is white. Tariq Nashi says that the man is white. And I told you, that's cold right there. That's why he keeps saying stay on cold, because he's talking about coon cold. That's what he's talking about. And I'm hearing he's suing Crump. I mean, for $100 million, they ain't going nowhere. Crump is a coon agent, too. Coon agent. I mean, these lawyers, I mean, anybody ever hear of coast-to-coast lawyers? I mean, come on. It's just crazy. But anyway, anybody who says that Zimmerman is a uh, Arab, I mean, a uh, white man, they're out of their damn minds. <laughs> I mean, those are agents. There's no doubt about that because... You can't honestly tell me that you could see a man like George Zimmerman <laughs> and uh, think, okay, this is a Ku Klux Klan member. I mean, come on. We'll see what they're trying to do. The media, the, the Masons, the Illuminati, they try to put it on. They try to brainwash you. That's what they're trying to do. And then they're trying to make you think, man, my eyes and what they're putting into my brain they're at conflict they want you to think and believe what they put into your brain and forget about what your eyes see and this also ties in with the Rachel Dolezal thing also where she tried to say I'm black but she was white and what they're doing with the so called black Latinos showing them white uh, showing them as black, and uh, even though they're so called Hispanic. So, Michi X, she says that all Hispanics are white, no matter what they look like. She's a full blown idiot, and people are instructing her to say such stupid things. This hoe is clearly paid by Tariq Nashi and Dr. Boyce, who are tight, by the way, they're together. Uh, so she doesn't mind being pimped. And what this Polish woman is doing, she is uh, speaking violence and advocating violence for us on behalf of us, even though she's not us. She hasn't even confirmed whether or not her black parent is actually a black American. That's what she hasn't been able to do yet. We know her white parent is a Polish person so he's not either, either way yeah Hispanics are black in, in truth that is the case even with these Mexicans Mongoloid style Mexicans they're mixed I'm gonna do a show on that and that's gonna tie into to the last person I'm gonna talk about which is that young pharaoh how you can see how he and Surah Sutanseti keep flipping <laughs> they're trying to uh, get any audience that they can get Lying like crazy. But um let me play a little bit of this Tariq I mean this uh oh before I do this I keep forgetting to do this. <laughs> Matter of fact, even before I do that, hold on, let me make sure I do this first. No, actually play a little bit of this Michi X in her video. And then you can uh hear for yourself for those who have not seen it. And you can see that this person is definitely a coon agent provocateur or a cracker agent provocateur. <laughs> yeah, let me see what this is. Let me screen, do this. Let me play this. Before I 
I get into that, let, let me read off these cash apps, give folks to get time to get in here from yesterday. So I can give a, a big thank you to all of y'all who, who show y'all love and support for the Black Agenda. Because at the end, y'all going to ask me what's the solution, and I'm going to tell you the solution. The solution is bring your ass to the Black Agenda in 2020. Because see, what, what we're not out here doing is like everybody else. We're not out here here to play games. We tired of going through the same bullshit over and over again. We know this shit don't work. We are not, we are not, the Black Agenda is not an organization that's going to tell you to go to the streets and march and protest and all of that bullshit. There's a time for marching and protest and it has its place, but in shit like this, no, the place, you, it's vital tickets. you don't show up to a massacre and you're getting killed and you're the one that's dying with motherfucking signs. That's not the time to fucking protest. There are times to protest and there are times not to. We tend to think that protesting and marching works for every goddamn thing. I'm here to tell you it does not. So we will be not marching and protesting at the Black Agenda. If you would like to do that and, you know, then I suggest you find another group of people to rock with. Because at the Black Agenda, oh, Michi don't give a fuck. We not here to share with other races. Yes, we don't want no allies in the motherfucking room. Um, we believe in fighting fire with fire. I mean, I don't know. People will probably say, well, don't say these things that you look bad. I'm tired of hiding and having to talk shit behind a closed door. The black agenda believes in fighting fire with fire. So motherfuckers, that means if you, violence begets violence, you bitch. So this country gonna continue to keep throwing all this violence and this hatred at us. I say it's time we fucking throw some back at them. The fuck? And I'm not sugarcoating it. Yeah, that's what we do at the black agenda. So if we show up, you gonna be talking about how we finna get free. And if a motherfucker keep killing us, we should kill him back. Absolutely. Not only are we going to do that, the black agenda is going to go a step further in 2020. We will hopefully have a carry concealed class for your ass. So before you leave, you can be ready to go get your strap. We will be looking at black gun stores and places where you can purchase a gun when you leave. So you don't even have to think about it. We will be telling you where the black gun clubs are, where the motherfucking uh, black shooting ranges are so that you can go get some training. Yes, we believe in that. Black agenda militant in the motherfucker. And we're not going to petty cake and we're not going to act like we being good Negroes just so don't know about Everybody look at us and say, my God, you're a black identity extremist. Meet you, you can't talk like this. They just gonna come shut you down. Well, you bitches is gonna have to do exactly that. You just gonna have to come shut me down. Well, she's really anyway, tough. let's talk about these um cash apps before we get into it. Because I'm telling y'all today, I'm not gonna... So anybody who donate today, cash app, PayPal, depending on how this video ends, just know I will shout you guys out tomorrow. So these are the people from yesterday when I ended the video. But I do want to give them a shout out before we get going because it probably won't be too much of that at the end of this video. Shout out to you, um, oh, uh, oh, Sean, boy, thank you for that. Thank you for that, brother. So I want to I want to give a shout out to the people who um, showed some love yesterday and um, cash app. Some of these, um, hey, it, it, already today. That's what's up. Um, Antonis, it's twenty dollars. Shout out to you, sis. Thank you for that. Um, but y'all giving it. I can't read both. Shout out to you, Dorothy. You always in here showing love. Thank you very, very much for that donation, sis. I appreciate it. So shout out to um Antoinette. Shout out to um Tanya. Shout out to Ray Jones this morning. He sent fifty dollars. Tanya sent five dollars. Um, Lenore sent uh Lenora sent five dollars. Kenya sent um seven dollars and fourteen cent. This was yesterday. Antoinette sent twenty dollars. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. Just bringing kids into a world that's black kids that know that this is what's waiting for them. Like, what? The All right, so you get a good idea. This lady's out here calling for violence. You know, it's a damn shame. Yeah, this is this lady is a coon agent. As you can see, she's still monetized, but she's going around calling for violence. And she's uh, talking about gun licenses and all that kind of stuff. I mean, if you're about getting busy, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what do you need gun licenses for? That doesn't make any sense. If you're, and you can tell she ain't about getting busy anyways because she's just smiling too damn much. And she's fucking high too. <laughs> and she's half white. <laughs> I mean, what the hell is her beef? I mean, come on. Now, you know, that's what I noticed. If you notice on YouTube, you'll see a lot of racist comments towards black people from people with Spanish names. And uh, 
a lot of the times, you know, that's designed to, all this goes together. It's designed to cause confusion and make black people say, OK, let me uh, get these uh, Mexicans or Hispanics. They're the problem. They got problems with us. But see, all that is happening while they continue to move tons and tons of Mexican type people into the Northeast and Northern U- U.S. <laughs> now, answer Af- anti-Afro Spengali, I don't think she's going to uh, expose this lady because she's a female. Uh, I, I, somehow, I don't think she she's trying to go there. She's fixed on uh, Umar Johnson. Which is not bad, though. I mean, he needs to be harassed by somebody. Maybe that's not the right word, but you know what I mean. Somebody needs to stay on his ass. Uh, but I wish some people would stay on uh, Tariq Nasheed, though, so, you know. But I guess it is what it is on him. But I'm going to get on him tonight. And uh, But this meet yet, she's irresponsible. And... Um, no matter how much she's getting paid, because again, she's a goddamn idiot. She let the shit slip out that she is still under contract uh, by Dr. Boyce. And once again, if you're a uh, YouTuber, an innocent YouTuber, <laughs> why is it that you're under contract from another YouTuber? That doesn't make sense. And what are you under contract for? That fly Nubian queen thing, which is a bunch of BS. I mean, he uses some broke down women. Remember, uh, Yvette Carnell used to be down with the program too. I don't know if it was fly Nubian queen because, you know, I don't think people would mistake Yvette Carnell for Nubian or even fly, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you see the fact that they he called them fly Nubian queens. It goes to show what audience he's trying to play up. Fly, number one, Nubian and queen. All trying to stroke and tickle the ass of black women. And to make them say, uh, you know, I'm down with you. Get with this. But see, that's not what it's all about. It's all about getting that money. I mean, that's the bottom line with it all. And that's why she's under contract. Contract is money. That's what it's all about. And we know Boyce and Nasheed work together. Michi X had her little so-called beef with Nasheed. And that made her numbers jump. <clears throat> then she went from show to show promoting her beef. And then as the beef kept going, I kept saying to myself, even after now, she kind of stopped talking about it as much. She kept going. I said, okay, yeah. She wants to keep this going. She had fake anger for reasons unknown. You know? Yeah. Tariq Nashi, he's not ready to go to war because people who are comfortable they're not going to war because they like what's going on. He said this is all about the money. When it's all, That's why I tell you the uh, <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, Jason Black is on Tariq's nuts too. See, they're all in it together and what were they saying? They were going, He uh, Jason Black was going against uh, Yvette and Tone Talks. See, and he was down with Tariq Nashi because Tariq Nashi has the money and he has a little more of a name. You know, apparently he made the Tonight Show. These people are looking for that. You know, they're, they're looking for uh, opportunity. They're looking for that cash flow. That's why they create documentaries. Because they want some money. I mean, the truth be told, you don't have to create. I know YouTube is kind of restrictive. Because if they weren't so restrictive, especially on my channel, I would put a whole lot of shit out there with video or audio evidence like I used to do when YouTube was first coming on. You know, that was a good thing when you could use clips and sounds to, you know, 
prove your point. But now, I mean, part of it is because when they started paying, people were like, okay, well, I want to make sure I get as much as money as I can get out of it and nobody else gets anything out of it. You know, that's what it's all about. So that kind of messed things up a little bit. It's like when you see the music videos now. A lot of these people, they're like, man, forget about some MTV. They don't play anything <laughs> anyway. So I just put um, my video on YouTube and get a lot of money. You see some of these hit YouTube videos got a billion hits. Uh, I mean, I don't even know how much money that is in YouTube, but that's a whole lot. And some people I never heard of got 16 million hits. I'm like, man, who? How? Whack-ass songs. But that's how these people get money now. It's YouTube hits instead of really selling albums because nobody's really selling anything. So that's how the Michi X and these other cool agents get protected. They get the YouTube money. Uh, that's why Michi X was under contract with Dr. Boyce. Under contract to do what? She says she can't talk about him, but then she was trying to talk about the man. But then she said, I can't get too deep because I'm still under contract. And why are you talking about it to begin with? Because it's all fake, just like uh, the Yvette Carnell split from Dr. Boyce. Her deal was the same thing like Michi X. Uh, money. They have the beef. She sets her own shit off. And she starts collecting money. Hand over foot. Or hand over fist, however they say it. <laughs> In her case, it might be hand over foot. And that's the same thing with me checks. They're just collecting money after money. But see, when I held these people's feet to the fire, I said that Yvette Carnell is getting the money. She ain't even telling you that she is going to a good cause. She's just taking it. Some people saying, give me the money because I want it. You know? <laughs> and me checks trying to say it's going into the Black Agenda Tour. But that's not a good excuse either because that's a for-profit uh, situation, that Black Agenda Tour. So it sounds like it's a good thing. Oh, this is where the money's going that you give me. <laughs> but it's a for-profit thing. I don't even think she's going to come out with another Black Agenda Tour any damn way. Because let's get real. Did it really make money? Huh? Yeah, she's trying to look sexy like you said. She was going to do that a long time ago. You got to sell the sex, man. That's West what Dr. Boyce is all about, man. Selling the sex. That's why he gets these females that look a certain way. <laughs> she's going to fight his crotch with her mouth. <laughs> they never create anything tangible with the money. Meechex tries to claim this Black Agenda tour was all financed by her, but then she had that beef with that Jace Johnson. And uh, again, once again, it's the good thing I made that video to show you how the website was before it changed and show that Dr. Boyce was behind this whole shit. And then she tried to switch it up. That's why they all made subsequent videos trying to switch it up. Jace Johnson tried to come uh, and sound, you know, intelligent on the con, but then Michi X, she was too stupid. So Michi actually had to just get raw with it. And then they had their uh, split. And again, it was all over money. It wasn't over ideology on how to move forward for the black people. It was all about the money. And both of these people are half and half. <laughs> half Asian and half white. <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's madness. You know? All these poverty pimps would be penniless if they had to depend on me. I don't watch these silly pep rallies. You have to get busy personally. Make legacies of power for our own generations to come. I always say this, man. We, we start with our families first. That's how we start. Get together and get a business or something going with them. Get educated with your kids first. Or your family members. That's how you start it off and then work with your neighbors or your friends and then everything comes together after that. But you have to make sure you stick with each other. And once somebody starts talking about all stuff, and I'm down with all people, got to leave them alone. 
because that all starts coming in, impacting us, and it hurts us. So forget that all. So that's that Michi X. She's a coon agent. If you listen to Michi X, because I noticed that she talks about people who make videos about her. And I know she couldn't miss mine. <laughs> but she didn't want to mention my name. But she already spoke to me. So it's too late, Michi X. <laughs> see, that's why I do it the way I do it. Because, see, when they speak to me, they don't know who the hell they're speaking to. <laughs> I got over a lot of what I thought I was going to get over with her, though. But um, she works with all these people. Now let me let me get into this to beat Nashi. Matter of fact, before I do that, it's been a while since I got these. But let me thank uh, Tanisha. I think that's how you pronounce that for the donation. And this looks like Zero Man for the donation and Dean. Thank you. I don't get them that often, <laughs> but uh, I thank you when I do get them. And if I got them more frequently, you know, like BTX or especially Yvette Carnell or even a Tariq Nashi, then I would be able to do what the hell it is I got planned on doing, but instead I can't do it right now. I'm going to do it eventually. It's just going to take more time. So anyways, let me get this to this Tariq Nashi. Because I keep listening to this guy. Uh, and he tries to get slick on a lot of things. And you know how I always say, give people the Jew test and the gay test. And um, that's how you can tell who the ages are. Oh, let me get to this first. <laughs> Shit. Dr. Boyce is the one that officially said it, but I said it before he said it, that she was gay. People like, nah, she ain't gay. What you talking about? How's she gay? You sure? I said, man, do you have eyes? <laughs> I mean, if you couldn't tell that lady was gay, even if the short haircut and before that, the dreads didn't do it for you. And if you saw pictures of her, how she dressed with the male type clothing, if that didn't do it for you, and you see how her hair was when she was uh, working in government, she didn't know what the hell to do with it. Look crazy. Almost looked like she was trying to be a man. If that didn't do it for you, then those tattoos on her body, that should have been the dead giveaway right there. All those tattoos. These gays love these tattoos, man. And, and piercings on the body. That's what I noticed. So once I saw the tattoos, I said, there ain't no question about that. You don't have to tell. I, I didn't have to be told. <laughs> so, you know, she's probably digging into some pussy like she digs into those stats, you know. <laughs> but she's uh, funny, though, because she's like a so-called pro-black. Black people are feeding her a lot of cash. But yet. She has a white woman. And that's why she kept on going in and trying to tell people, hey, don't worry about the uh, the gay stuff. Don't worry about all that. You can't go around hating gays. We got to concentrate on us. We're all black. See, when people start talking that talk, they're trying to set your mind up and condition your mind for a future event, which is usually going to be love the gays. As far as I'm concerned, if you're not into it, there's no need to endorse it, you know? Just like if you're not a serial killer, what are you going to endorse that for? Only people who are into that are going to be down with that. You know? It's crazy, but that's what uh, Boyce and uh, Nashi. See, the only thing I like about Nashi going on them is because the gay thing will come out. And he'll uh, open his big mouth, except and he, he, he's really trying to uh, get down on it. But see that uh, black authority, uh, the problem with him, <laughs> yeah, small hat challenge. That means if they can't talk about the small hats without what I'm about to get into with Tariq Nasheed right now, without trying to make it look like they're victims, 
and not the victimizers, their agents. Same thing with the gays. If they can't get raw with it, they're agents. But that Jason, the black authority, I saw a picture of that guy. And by the way he talks, I know he's going to, if some he or one of his agents are listening, <laughs> they're going to say, what you talking about? But you can't tell me that man ain't kind of funny. You can't tell me. The way he talks. And then he uh, likes to play black people. Walk it up. Like he's the only motherfucker who came up with some words that he uses. Or the only one who could know the words that he uses. I hate black people like that. And then he came with that snob shit just like Tariq Nashi, so it's no surprise. I'm only dealing with people with money. Those are the only people that I need to be listened to. Really? So, drug dealers, you can listen to them if they have money. Come on. This is crazy. So this black authority, they're all down, down in it together. Maybe they're trying to box Yvette out. But some who knows how that part is going down but Michi X is down with this situation if the black authority does an expose on Michi X then maybe you know I might uh, <laughs> change my mind on that at least on that uh, Michi X part of the situation hint 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 so let me get to this Tariq Nashi and the small hat challenge on his part uh, what he did was he trying to get slick? And in case you don't know, everything that he says on his lives, they're all planned and by design. And how do you know this? He, he comes off, so off as if he's just popping the shit out of his mind. Like, oh, yeah, let me tell you about this, people. Let me tell you about that. The shit is a written out script. And you know this because every time he starts, he always has his list of, oh, go to, don't forget to go to uh, such and such uh, dot com and buy the hidden colors bullshit or to buy the, like I said, the 1804 he doesn't promote anymore because I guess that shit flopped. And I guess he can't talk about the 1804 shit anymore <laughs> because he started that foundational black American bullshit. So if that's the case, you can't remind people, oh, yeah, I did one about Haiti. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you just can't do that. <laughs> So that's why he, I think that's another reason he just stopped talking about that 1804 shit. So <clears throat> he's not slick. I know his game. And uh, if you listen to the lives that he does when he's not on screen, every video he does 10 minutes of promotion, 10 minutes of selling you shit. Then every time he's talking to you, he's selling you shit or trying to sneak in a way to sell something to you. So, and you could always tell because he'll say, like when he was doing the thing with the Roland Martin uh, theme music, he's like, yeah, I don't like his theme music. Then he's like, oh, you know what? Let me play it. He had it all queued up already. Like I got his video queued up right now. I'm about to show you. <laughs> That's why I started doing it. I said, oh, I might as well do it. But see, I'm not coming in here acting like, oh, it's right off the top of my head. Oh, let me play it. I'm just queuing it up so once I get it ready, you can hear it for yourself in case you didn't see it. So he started talking about uh, the Queen and Slim movie. And again, I think everybody's paid off a little something to talk about that shit. Because so I can give a fuck about that movie, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I mean, wasn't interested in seeing that once I saw that African dude. I'm like, man, what the hell? I don't want to see that. Play African, don't play us. So, once that started, he started slipping in some talk about Nazi Germany, <laughs> you know, and BMW, Mercedes, and how they were Hitler, uh, influenced Hitler, it was, and they were getting funded from Hitler's Germany, but I believe those cars were in effect before Hitler took power. And he says, don't you find it funny how Jews don't ride around in those cars? I find it funny. How the hell do you know? <laughs> I mean, come on. And I'm trying to think. Uh, Jews ride Benzes, man, because Jews are German. 
So and they 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 drive Benzes, they drive BMWs, and uh, then he was saying, "Oh man, so you guys like uh, black people? You like flaunting all these name brands?" So he just kept bringing out the German companies and and relating it to Hitler. I'm like, okay, what do you what's, what's the point you're trying to prove, man? Huh? Yep, that's right. He keeps pushing that too. You know what the hell that's all about. That's all about kissing ass because he must do that. Now, I keep saying, what are you trying to do? Tariq Nasheed? Why are you bringing up Hitler in Germany and those brands like a lot of us don't know that Hitler was rocking and riding in BMWs and he helped design uh, the, Volks, well, the Volkswagen Beetle? I mean, come on. We know Tariq Nasheed is kissing ass just like Stephen A. Smith is kissing ass. Today, that guy that talked about uh, Lamar Jackson, he's like, oh, we should, he shouldn't be fired. He should be suspended. Then every time somebody called up talking about, oh, he should be fired, particularly a black guy. He likes to bully guys on the phone until you uh, say, okay, all right, you win. You win. I, I, I can't think what I was thinking anymore. <laughs> Let me call the Stephen A. Smith show, guy, damn it. I'll tell him, you ain't bullying me. <laughs> you ain't getting me to think like you. I'm thinking like I'm thinking. You know, so this is the thing. He kept talking about these German companies. Like most of us didn't know that these things were contemporary with Hitler or before that. I mean, you got to understand they took control of the damn country. I'm not necessarily making an excuse, but God damn it. That's what happened. They took control of the damn country. These companies were already in effect. I mean, well, I mean, what do you expect them to ride in? Uh, a Ford? <laughs> I mean, come on. Truth be told, this government, the U.S., they drive, they ride the Cadillacs and the Lincolns because they're American. But in their private cars, <laughs> they usually ride in a foreign car. <laughs> I mean, so come on. <laughs> we we got to stop this bullshit. And, <clears throat> and the way this system and this government has everything set up, they always tell you, a foreign car, the, the the European car is where it's at. They don't even promote the Japanese car. And if you notice the Hyundai car, the Genesis, which is their luxury brand, what was the other one they used to have? The Hyundai. I forgot the other uh, one that was the uh, Hyundai. Damn, I forgot it. But it was a uh, luxury car on the Hyundai with the. Hyundai badge on it. Then the Genesis <clears throat> supposed to be their top of the line joint. But you notice how you know what I'm gonna do that. Let me write this down. So I can show you before I forget that. Matter of fact, you're right about that. Let me say this. Let me play a little bit of this guy's video because this guy, <laughs> he's full of shit. Uh, but see, oh yeah, before I even play that, let me say see this, uh, say this when you uh, hear it. As he was talking about Hitler, they never let that Hitler stuff go either. But when we talk about slavery, they want that to go. Uh, they said, he, he slipped in Jesse Owens. That's what he did. And Adidas. And he tried to uh, relate black people into the Hitler thing. So he could tug on our heartstrings and say, oh, maybe we should be rocking a Mercedes or a BMW. Well, I'll say to this when the United States uh, stops rocking the Benz and the BMW, then uh, maybe we should stop doing it, right? I mean, they keep promoting it. They say you don't have a real car unless you have a Benz or a BMW, right? <laughs> so, but he tried to put the Jesse Owens and the Adidas into the situation. So we'll have an input because, you know, a lot of black people, as they were listening to that, as you're about to listen to, probably black people are probably saying to themselves, okay, well, what does this have to do with me? Why are you talking about this, Tariq Nashi? He's a coon agent. That's why he's talking about it. 
So let me get into that, then I'm going to get into something else that I want to do on a sidebar so you can understand. Oh, you know what? Oh. So we can hear this. I was talking about something on Twitter for, for the last few days, because black folks, we like mega trinkets. We like flossing, name brand things. See, every If it's white, it's right. We love running around with our Gucci Prada and all that old shit. If you look at Instagram, that's all it is. It's basically a bunch of goofy Negroes running around with name brand stuff, flashing that and thinking that they're getting closer to white supremacy. They're getting more of a camaraderie with white supremacy by flashing their name brand shit. Let's be real. Let's be real. You go look at Instagram, you get a bunch of Instagram thoughts with their fashion open and little purses and all that stuff. Flossing. And black folks, do you know most of these big name fashion brands that y'all flossing. Do y'all know how these folks got started? M many of these big fashion names that niggas love so much, most of these people were literal Nazis. I was posting that on Twitter and it was rubbing some people the wrong way. Show offism. But let's, let's break some of this stuff down. Hugo Boss. Negroes love rocking boss. And some, I understand you want to wear clothes. Look, I like certain clothes that's connected with some of these. Well, I get it, but I ain't out there flossing and all that shit. Hugo Boss, since everybody likes Hugo Boss, how many of y'all knew that Hugo Boss was a Nazi? Not was, he wasn't a Nazi sympathizer. He was a Nazi. He was a card-carrying Nazi. Hugo Boss was German. Do y'all know that? No, not only was Hugo Boss a Nazi, he was the one who manufactured the Nazi uniforms. That's how he got his come up. That's how he started getting the, in the game. He was manufacturing the outfits. Those are Hugo Boss outfits the Nazi was wearing. Not only that, Hugo Boss was letting the Nazis use his factories to make weapons. Yeah, he made their uniforms. Mm, look all this stuff up. Ladies, you like your little Chanel bags, don't you? You like your little Coco Chanel? Well, guess what? Coco Chanel was a spy for the Nazis. Mm-hmm. Yep. Look at that. There's a great book on that. She was working with the Nazis. She was a spy going back and forth to France and Germany. She was helping them out because remember, uh, um, Germany took over France. You dig? And speaking of the French, Louis Vuitton worked with the Nazis. Louis Vuitton was a Nazi collaborator. Google this. Mm. Google it. Oh, Ferdinand Porsche. I was posting this. Ferdinand Porsche, who made the Porsche car. Not only did he make the Porsche, he made the Mercedes Benz. He made the Volkswagens. Porsche, Ferdinand Porsche was a Nazi. Ferdinand Porsche was a Nazi family. Hate to break it to you. That's why, notice a lot of Jewish people don't buy Mercedes Benz. There's a reason a lot of Jewish people, they don't buy Mercedes Benz because most of those cars in Nazi Germany, most of the cars were, were made by Ferdinand Porsche and they were Mercedes. Most of those cars were Mercedes. And Ferdinand Porsche was damn near Hitler's right hand man, basically. Yeah. Yeah, they don't they don't fuck with that. They know. 
They know what not to rock with. Yeah. Mmm. Yeah. It's heavy. You see, a lot of this stuff is right here in our faces. And yeah, Fanta, the, the drink Fanta, that was created by the Nazis too. Those bear aspirin that you like. The Bayer Aspirin Company, one of the biggest aspirin companies in the world, they were under the same company that made the Zyklon B. That was the gas that killed the people in the concentration camps. That was made by the same company that was clicked in with Bayer, Bayer Aspirin. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Bayer, they made the gas chambers. A lot of these, notice a lot of these big businesses, they, these businesses are out here making billions, still getting it popping, and nobody's telling you what I'm telling you. Nobody's telling you what I'm telling you, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. See, and white people know Kodak. Kodak camera. He was clicked in with the Nazis. Yep. Christian Dior. Mmm. Ladies, I know you love your Christian Dior. Mm. I know you like your Christian Dior. Mm. Y'all like your Miss Dior. But guess what? How did Christian Dior get started? He got started making dresses for the wives of the Nazis. Google that. That's how Christian Dior got started. Yes. He got started making the dresses for the Nazi wives. His sister actually got put in a concentration camp and they somehow rescued her out of it. And then he named a, a brand after her, the Cologne, Miss Dior. She's Miss Dior, his sister who was in a camp and he was making money from the Nazis. This is what I'm telling you, dude. These folks are ruthless with it. Google what I'm saying. This shit is crazy. Mm. It's crazy. Henry Ford, he was clicked in with the Nazis too. And another thing about Henry Ford, it was another, at the same time Henry Ford was doing his thing, it was a black car company out here, the Patterson Car Company in Ohio. Um, Henry Ford, he had more capital. He was clicked in with the Nazis. So, I mean, he, he was clicked in with the dominant society. So Henry Ford was able to mass produce his cars and the Patterson Car Company, they had to, to do their cars by hand. The Patterson Car Company was the only black-owned car company in America. They, these folks made quality cars that they built by hand. And they had to go out of business because Ford came through with that mass production. So those, those Model T cars... Those Model T cars were, were shittier cars, but he could make more of them. You had these black folks making these Patterson cars that were high quality, but it just took them longer to make. And, and Henry Ford got George Washington Carver to kind of help him with the game on a technical level. You did Yeah, that's why. Yeah, somebody said that's why the Ford cars are trash now. Yeah, that mass production, just throwing a bunch of cars. Throwing, yeah, the assembly line. That's what killed the Pattersons. The Pattersons were on Ford's ass. Their cars were way better. You did. And then what happened when the the Patterson family they had to stop making those cars? So what they started doing, they started making buses. And during the 1920s to the 30s, most of the buses in Ohio was made by this black bus company, the Patterson, the Patterson people. A lot of folks don't know this shit. Half the buses in Ohio at that time were made by a black company. Yeah. Yes, everybody hit the like button. We in here heavy. Hit the like button. And look, another thing, and I'm guilty of this, Adidas... I like Adidas. I like the Adidas sweatsuit. I'm guilty of that. I like Adidas. Some of y'all like Pumas. Adidas and Pumas started off they were Nazis. Did y'all know that? Adidas and Puma? Mmm. 
Yeah, that's that's a hard one. That's a hard Adidas and Puma. Those companies were started by Adolf Dazzler and his brother Rudolf Dazzler. Addy and Rudy. Those were their nicknames. Yes, guys, I hate to break it to you. So Rudolf Dazzler, Rudy, he started Puma. Adolf Dazzler started Adidas. So they were actually rival companies. They were rivaling each other for years, but they were both Nazis. Look at the name Adida. Adolf Dazzler, his nickname was Addy. Addy Dazzler. And when you look at the Adidas shoe, he just named the shoe after his his first nickname and the beginning of his last name. So he just named the shoe his as his name. Addy Dazzler. Addy Daz. Addy Daz. Adidas. So when you wear your Adidas, we rock our Adidas. We're rocking the Nazi shit. I hate to say it. And I got Adidas clothes, but yeah. I, I know, I'm, I'm guilty too. And this is the ironic thing about Adidas. Yes, Adidas comes from, uh, from Adi, Adidas, Adidas. The thing is, and they were card-carrying Nazis, but this is the kicker though. This is the ironic thing. So they joined, Adi Dazler and his brother, they joined the Nazi party and they are all about the white superior race, but their shoe company, because they were shoe cobblers. That's not what Nazis were about. They were shoe cobblers, and they made some some athletic shoes, but they were about to go out of business because at the time, nobody really, you know, had a need for athletic shoes in Germany. It was like, you know, like war was on the horizon, so they really had no time for no damn athletic shoes, but they had the Olympics out there. They had the Olympics out there. And Jesse Owens wore Adi Dazzler's shoes, the Adidas. When Jesse Owens wore those shoes and he was winning all those races, he was winning all of those matches, that was universal. That, 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 that was put on the international stage, and that's what made people want to buy those Adidas. After Jesse Owens wore those shoes, Adidas sales went through the roof. So that's the irony. Some Nazis put together some shoes and you're supposed to be the master race, but this black man made your shit hot and you've been eating off this black man for 70 damn years. You did? That's the irony. And Adidas, they did some kind of um, commemorative thing for Jesse Owens' shoes not too long ago. I know they did something for Jesse Owens. And as they should, as they should, yeah, we've been making this stuff. Yeah, so all that that he said was nothing but for what reason? Because he said, um, I hate to break it to you, they were Nazis. Okay, now you're talking to black people, you hate to break it to us. I mean, what are we going to do to stop uh, dealing with these brands? <laughs> How's that affecting us? He's not talking to us. He's kissing his masters behind when he says that. But let me uh, look at this because I also could have sworn that Fanta soda was uh, Israeli. Well, let me just double check. <laughs> Cause sworn it was Israeli. Okay, country of origin: Germany, Italy. I could sworn it was Israeli when I looked at it before. Maybe that's a different brand. Maybe, no, that's that same one. Because one was Israeli, but okay, it says German. I'll stick with that. But let me uh, show you this. So we're talking about that Hyundai Genesis.
So the main thing <clears throat> I want to talk about is the logo. This is a foreign car. And if you notice, every ultra luxury brand, I know some people may not consider this ultra luxury, but for Honda it is. You notice how they have the wings on them. It goes to show who's in control. All the same for the top cars. It's considered to be the for a certain class of people. They all have the, the wings. Matter of fact, let me see if I could just put this in. Oh, the Chrysler too. Uh, I don't think people consider that top notch, but. <laughs> and they're usually foreign cars. They want to add the Mazda. I guess that's one of them. But usually the Bentley, Aston Martin, and now the Genesis. And uh, what's that other? Uh, what's that other vehicle? What's that other Korean vehicle? So, in other words, these wings, it's like they have to put it in because of that Illuminati stuff, Egyptian stuff. That's why I'm starting to wonder who these small hats really are. Really starting to wonder. Because they're damn sure not promoting that religion. But what Tariq Nashi was talking about, you know, he was talking about that uh, for the sole reason to kiss their behinds. That was it. <laughs> I mean, because that's why he bought in the Jesse Owens uh, thing to try and relate to us. Now, wh wh why are we supposed to be concerned about those brands if they're still sold in the United States? I mean, come on. Matter of fact, I was looking up sweatsuits after he was talking about that because I was like, damn, man, what happened to sweatsuits? Anybody still making sweatsuits? And I saw that there were a lot of weird looking sweatsuits for today's fashions <laughs> and today's weird people. But I did look up uh, a Gucci sweatsuit. All together, this shit was 5Gs. If you saw somebody walking down the street with it, yeah, I think rappers have been wearing that. You probably wouldn't even notice that shit. And wouldn't think it was 5Gs. <laughs> I said they got to be sick. But there are people out there who buy that. Just to say, hey, I got it. But most of the time, only you will know that you paid five G's for it. <laughs> but this is what they do. Now, let me uh, get to this young Pharaoh guy speaking of wings and, and that type of thing. I mean, because we know Tariq Nasheed is, is a coon agent. You know, again, once you pay these people... I mean, that's, that's all it is, man. I mean, you get them fame, you stroke their egos, you got them. It doesn't take much for black people to sell out. It doesn't take too much for anybody to sell out. You give them some uh, life-changing money, uh, they'll, they'll uh, do what they want. Young Pharaoh. This, what's funny about him, <laughs> he and Sir Asut and Seti, you know, that's how they always kick more so Seti. Less so Young Pharaoh. They always kick this uh, Africa, black, we're all African and all that kind of shit. You talked about the Native American stuff. They don't want to hear that. Or they didn't want to hear it. But now all of a sudden, they're hearing it. You can see it in uh, Young Pharaoh's face. He keeps trying to get people to pay for his so-called lectures, which is nothing but kookiness and craziness. And I got some of his people who keep coming at me 
because I made that Fruity Faro video. <laughs> and, they, and they're like, um, and they're like, uh, why are you hating? Where's your proof that he's Fruity? I said, I keep, I, they, it is how you can tell they're lying because I have to keep on saying, hey, man, you can't see the picture. I mean, damn. <laughs> if you can't see the picture that this man was fruity, then that must be a lifestyle. I mean, <laughs> I mean, what more is needed? It's crazy. But you notice Pharaoh changed his uh, style. And went back to looking like a man, you know. And he, again, just like Tariq Nasheed is talking about the German companies or the Nazi companies, he did that to play up to the small hats. Young Pharaoh uh, was dressing like a uh, tranny as he was talking about him to show his masters. I'm talking about him, but hey, I'm dressing like one too, so you can tell. I'm doing what you tell me to do. That's why he's so distressed and pissed off that they demonetized him. Because he's like, I know this must be a mistake. I'm a coon agent. How can you demonetize me? Tariq Nasheed is not demonetized. Uh, Michi X is not demonetized. Boyce Watkins, he's not demonetized. Maybe they signed some secret contracts with YouTube or something. So they can uh, coon out at will and get paid. So... What this guy was talking about now, like you said, uh, said he was calling to kill the Indian, calling to kill the Arab, and said he was totally against um, black people in America or black people anywhere being anything but African. You know, matter of fact, for most of his, up until probably this year, if you asked SETI about anybody outside of Africa and the Americas being black. He would have said, you're sick. That's what he would have done. That's what he used to say. Because people like me, I always talked about blacks in Asia. You can't deny that. But that's not what the white man's media focuses on, so that's why you don't see him. What you focus on, on t what he focuses on on TV, is what gets implanted into people's minds. But those are the governments; those aren't the masses of the people, you know. And again, it's the same thing, just like the country of Sudan back in the day. Recently, now I keep seeing news about Sudan and the government since uh, Bashir got uh, overthrown, but prior to they're putting a price on his head. They didn't really show the Sudanese government that much because they didn't want people to see, oh, damn, they're Arabs, but they're black. And if you don't want to accept them as Arabs, then God damn it, they must be related to the ancient Egyptians. So they, they can't have that. You take one thing away, <laughs> you got to have, have it another way. So, yeah, D, uh, Michi X, she's a coon agent. That's why. She didn't get demonetized. When he called for the kill, even Tariq Nashi did, did too. He called for the killing of white people. He said, man, you got to start hitting these people back. You got to start taking action, killing them. Not only are they not demon demonetized, but their channels are still up. But <clears throat> these people are funny. They're like, um, now, slowly as things went on this year, SETI started acquiescing to the fact, okay, there are black people outside of Africa. Because that's my whole thing when I talk to Pan-Africanists, I always like to remind them that black people are not only in Africa and they're not only in the Americas. See, they want to stick to the white man story, which is blacks come from Africa and Africa only. You remember that all facts he said, and that other guy, he said that, uh, and they're pissed off about that video to the hood world maps. They said, nappy hair only comes from Africa. They pissed off about that. They hate that. They were hating on me. Trip knows what I'm talking about. They hating on me. <laughs> but those were their words. I mean, that's what they said. They hate that on me because I put it up. I didn't brainwash them into talking that. That's what they want to talk. That's what they believe. 
So they said that blacks only come from Africa. That's what the white man says. And they came to the Americas via slavery only. That's what SETI, young pharaoh, pan-Africanists, that's what they always stuck with. Then blacks in Asia, they didn't want to talk about. Because the white man says that blacks in Arabia come from Africa only via slavery. But see, if you use common sense, you have to say to yourself, damn, but Arabia is right next to Africa. Why would the only way for blacks to get into Arabia is when somebody came into Africa and dragged them over there? Egyptians, as you saw when I showed the ships, had boats for at least 4500 BC. And we know they went to Punt, which they say was in Somalia. And you know they had to travel down the Red Sea. <laughs> How come nobody enslaved the Egyptians back then? Oh, because white man says they weren't black. That's why. <laughs> but we know they were. <clears throat> but we know that that's BS as far as the enslavement part. Because, see, it's the white man, the white so-called Arab. He's the Johnny come lately to the game. Black people were there. Watch me. I'm, I'm going to get busy one day on this. See, with this live stuff, I, I like doing it more because it's easier to just throw up everything. And then the white man also says that blacks in North Africa only got there via slavery. In other words, all the choice spots, Europe. Matter of fact, he doesn't even like talking about the Europe part. If you notice in white man's documents and books, he doesn't even like acknowledging the black presidents in there, if he does, he'll say it's because Rome occupied, and this is how he gets caught in his lie, occupied Africa, which is North Africa only. And that's how black people got into the Roman Empire. <laughs> but see, that's how his lies work. Because if blacks weren't, were only taken to the North Africa via Islamic uh, trans-Saharan slave trade now how the hell did they get to North Africa before Islam came to North Africa <laughs> and then how the hell did they get to Europe that's BS I mean that's, that's all you gotta do is just listen to his own lies you know what I mean yeah that's another thing they said they, man, come on That's another thing they were talking about. Where is the casino? That's what Pan Africans say. You saw me show the pictures of those natives that run those casinos. They were black. They said, where's the casino money at? He keeps trying to make it look like a Mexican is running these, these things. I told you, I went to those casinos, and the only thing I see was the Mongol-style natives sweeping the floors. And I'm not trying to be funny. I'm being real. And I don't even know if those were part of the tribe or just Mexicans hired just for effect, <laughs> you know. But we saw the high command. I showed you the pictures. You could look that up yourself. People always say, where's that casino? When you got to be a part of that tribe, though. You know, so but regardless, though, the point is slowly but surely, the, the staunch Pan-Africanists, the Africa only, Sarah Sutton Seti and others like him started saying, okay, the black man was in Europe. They started teaching it like they've been teaching this forever. And like that's something that they uh, subscribe to. Same thing with blacks in Asia. Prior to, to that, all they ever talked about was the, the kind of Renoko Rashidi shows. Black, half-naked <laughs> type natives. In Australia, New Zealand, New Guinea. Then uh, SETI started talking about blacks in Cambodia. And then the next thing you know, he's like, he said, I'm going to show you this picture. Uh, blacks with afros on the uh, walls. Then he's like, I'm the first one to show you this. See, he, he plagiarizes too. 
you know, he, he does that a lot. He likes to act like everything came from him only. That's not cool. And he said he went to college. So he knows damn well he shouldn't be doing it. But he doesn't. He wasn't kicking that before. But see, his audience was pulling away because they get tired of, okay, we heard about this Egyptian shit for the last 10 years or so. <laughs> I mean, what else do you have, Seti? You know, so now he wants to play up to other people with other realms of blackness and talk about this uh, Asian stuff. Then he started talking about the blacks in Europe. But he wants to say they all came from Africa. That's the problem. If they're all over the place, how could they have just come from Africa? If nobody, no other human beings were in these other places, why do you have to relate it back to Africa? Because if these black people were everywhere first, then that's where they're at. Peace Aboriginal, that's where they're at. I mean, so, I mean, you, you just can't keep saying these things and trying to change the narrative. You can't relate everything back to Africa. Now, come, when it comes to these uh, natives, the black style is what I call them, natives. You just can't say, okay, we were here first, but they came from Africa. <laughs> I mean, you just can't do that. Now, I will admit this. The Olmecs, not facial feature-wise from what we've seen, but stylistic, uh, culture-wise, there are some similarities between, they want to stress Nubia, not Egypt. <clears throat> they want to, you know, that's what Vance Hertema asserted and a few others. And I do see it, you know. And it took me a while to see the blackness because I too, like all facts used to say, what about the hair? Then once the hair, I saw the hair, lips, facial features, that's one thing. But once I saw the hair, that's when I said, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> and uh, that's the, that was the game changer for me. But here's the issue. Why do you have to relate everything back to Africa? That's the main question. And uh, you just can't do that. And the reason you can't do that is because if you do that, now you have to say that the white man took us as slaves. And if you say, again, once I always say, once you acknowledge that blacks were here before slavery of the white man, then you kind of pull out from the white man brought us over here as slaves argument because you can't use that now. But they want to use both. <laughs> you can't use both. But if you wanted to use both, then that means that we were here first before the white man got here. That supersedes the slave argument. But they still want to stick to the African thing. <laughs> I mean, you just can't do that. It's one or the other. And if it is a little bit of the other or both, then you can't dismiss black Americans' claims of Native America. You just can't do that. Because once you acknowledge that we were here first, that, that's it. That's the end of the story right there. And I keep saying it. That, so everybody out there, when you argue with these people, that's all you have to do is hit them with that. Once you back them into a corner, get them to commit, which they already have, sign that all these other people they already have. Once they've committed, that's it. End the argument. Sir Ross Hutton said he, Young Pharaoh, they've committed to that. But Young Pharaoh makes a new video, a pr promo video, because you got to pay to watch his kooky lectures, which I'll be damned. So he's, he's now promoting blacks as natives, but he's trying to say it in a way as if he told you this all the time which you know he hasn't. He stayed away from it. He doesn't call himself Young Native. He calls himself Young Pharaoh. So you know he's full of shit. <laughs> so uh, It goes to show they're trying to win over a new audience because they, they've lost their old one. What the fuck? Hello? What the hell? <laughs> uh, something just happened. He's trying to win. I don't know if it's yeah, still on. Oh, I see this. 
Firefox is not responding. But I think they still hear me because I, th- I see this thing still jumping, but I'll keep talking. But this uh, this is their new BS that these people are trying to come with. Because they lost their original audience. People are tired of hearing about Egypt. And yeah, durable goods. I think the clear-cut consensus is the white man's story or his excuse of why... He found black people. Okay, hello? Oh, man, they took my uh, logo off and shit. God damn. Can you hear me? Damn, man. What the hell happened here? (laughs) Can you hear me? Am I still on? It says uh, still on. It didn't end. No, maybe they can't hear me. Damn, what the hell happened to my, uh... Oh, okay. All right, so as I was saying, <laughs> I don't know what the hell happened. They just removed my logo and every damn thing. But, um... Yeah, see, the white man's excuse was where black people are in the Middle East, Europe originally, Asia, all over the world, the excuse was slavery. <laughs> is what got us there. And we had to wait for the white man to come around and appear on the planet so he could transport us via force to all these different places. But see, the problem is when it comes to places like Australia, New Guinea, New Zealand, they don't use the slavery excuse because we all know that the white man didn't get to these places first. Because he, we know that the white man met the blacks in Australia, New Zealand, Oceania when they were there. So he couldn't say, okay, well, we took the black people to Australia. So that's why he just said, let me just shut up about that. <laughs> See, when you lie too much and some things don't make sense, you got to shut up about it. So that's what they ended up doing with that. And uh, the other... The rest of the world, you got to believe that so few white people took so many black people all over the planet via slavery. So-called white Arabs took black people across the Sahara. But I already showed you, and as I'm sure all of you know already, that black people were already there before the so-called white Arab went there, even though the Arabs were black, but, you know, white man lies nonstop. So when it comes to the Americas... Again, as little children, I'm sure we all had the thought in our minds, man, damn, how did so few take so many? That's the question, and they haven't been able to answer it. The white man has his coons and toms, but they can't answer it either. All they can do is come up with lies. Now we got these Pan-Africans. They admit that we were here in the Americas before 
the white man got here. So that's the end of story right there. And that's a good thing because now they can shut up about it. <laughs> we got you. So young Pharaoh, Michi X, Tariq Nasheed, and the ringmaster, Dr. Boyce Watkins. Your coon agents. And as far as Michi X and he's and he's Tariq Nashi, I know he's not gonna do anything. I know young Pharaoh, he's too scared straight, losing all that money. He's like, damn, what am I gonna do now? Let me start charging people <laughs> uh, for what I used to give away for free. <laughs> I'll be damned if I pay for a young Pharaoh so called lecture. But like that Sanchez guy. I'm going to try to get on the live. We're going to see if my man's for real. He said, if you want to challenge me, you can get on. But I see that he does it like Sarnetta. He kind of uh, doesn't let people speak. So that's not cool. But we're going to see what happens. I'm going to get on there after a while. I think he, he might broadcast maybe tomorrow. We'll find out. We'll find out. But I think you have to call in with him and you just can't get a link. So with that being said, you know, I want to point this out. These people are liars. These people are coon agents. And um, you know how it is. Normally, I don't broadcast on a Thursday or any day that football is played. <laughs> but since I did make the time and I wanted to get that out quickly, I got it out. So I thank everybody. Uh, and I leave you as I came. I salam alaikum. No, I didn't come that way. But thank you. And uh, have a good night. <laughs>